Now then, welcome to another revision video. Um, as you can see, this one's a little bit different, but I promised my kids we'd come to the castle and I'm having an absolute nightmare with my computer. So hopefully this will work. This video is gonna look at uh, theme E, crime and punishment. And with crime, we need to understand that that is an offense that breaks the law and punishment is the legal consequence for breaking the law. The problem is though, when we look at right, wrong, good and evil and legal and illegal, they don't always match. So, <clears throat> we have a set series of reasons for crime. Poverty, upbringing, greed, mental illness, addiction, and opposition to an unjust law, and hate. And what we'll do is we'll have a look at the way Christianity, which is the main religious tradition of Great Britain and the one you have to write about, and Buddhism, which is the religion that my guys have studied, um, look essentially at crime and punishment. So, with poverty being a reason for crime, Christians and Buddhists would say that compassion is the most important thing. It's not an excuse, all right, poverty. Uh, there needs to be a, uh, an element in Christianity to follow the rules, you shall not steal. And also in Buddhism, the second precept, don't take things that don't belong to you. With upbringing, this is where the communities of each religion come in. So with Christianity, it's the family and the church. And with Buddhism, it's families and the Sangha, the Buddhist community, You're supposed to bring up people in a correct and moral way. When it comes to greed, Christianity tells us not to covet and to essentially not be greedy. And in Buddhism, greed is one of the three poisons that is the root of all suffering. So again, not an excuse. With mental illness, Christians would say to treat the mental illness, illness and Buddhists would look at compassion through karuna. Uh, again, that word compassion is an important word. Uh, addiction is a cause of crime. Christians would talk about um, essentially being against drugs and looking to help the uh, victim, not the victim, sorry, help the, the criminal who is addicted. Uh, the fifth precept of Buddhism tells us to avoid intoxicants that cloud the mind. So again, we are taught very clearly to avoid these things. When it's an opposition to an unjust law, as we looked in one of the previous videos, um, Buddhists and Christians are perfectly open to protest as long as it is justified and non-violent. So I guess in some instances you could use this to justify crime if it is in opposition to an unjust law, as long as it is not violent and as long as it is perfectly justified. With hate crimes, uh, both religions are dead set against this. Uh, hate is one of the three poisons in Buddhism and in Christianity you are specifically told to love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. The problem is though, intent is often a bit uh, different to causes of crime. Uh, let me explain. So, adultery is not illegal, alright? And abortion is not illegal in many places as well. But, in religious laws, those two things come up and they can be deemed to be very wrong. And then if you look at the positives that religion tells us, like giving to charity and helping others, that's not a law. You don't have to, by law, give to charity. You don't have to be expected by law to help other people. That's just a teaching within Buddhism and Christianity. So, it's important to understand that religions will have different attitudes to society. We can sum up the main uh, religious tradition of Great Britain, Christianity, by saying uh, essentially that we shouldn't hate the criminal. Offenders must be punished, to be fair, you don't get away with it. Offenders still have rights and we need to aim for rehabilitation and reformation. <laughs> Kids are shouting at me. Uh, in Buddhism, you're supposed to not hate the criminal. You don't favour punishment uh, because vengeance only causes more suffering and consequences is a big impact on karma. The aim, again, is for rehabilitation and reformation. Um, let's have a look here. Intentions are more important than actions. Is a good 12 marker to have a crack at. So, the three aims of punishment are retribution, deterrence, and reformation. Retribution is revenge. That's getting your own back. Deterrence is to put people off committing the crime in the first place. And reformation is to change your behavior for the better. All right. <clears throat> Christianity believes with regards to retribution, that you should not, uh, you do not overcome by evil. Sorry, try that again. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. All right, that's Romans 21, verse 21. And some Christians, though, would say an eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth, but that completely ignores Jesus. I'm getting distracted by these two. 
Alright. And Buddhism. Buddhism tells us to abstain from taking life, so there can be no mortal revenge. And then we have the uh, concept of metta and karuna, which is loving kindness and compassion. And Tenzin Gyatso, the Dalai Lama, said we should never seek revenge on those who have committed crimes against us. So again, it's all about forgiveness. So let's have a look at deterrence. Christianity is uh, perfectly fine with uh, punishment being a deterrent, but we need to avoid humiliation and avoid being too harsh. And Buddhism says that imprisonment can be justified, but the only way to really justify imprisonment is to protect society, uh, not as a real punishment or a deterrence. So they are slightly different points of view. With Reformation, this is the most favourable aim of punishment for both Christians and Buddhists. It's not a replacement for punishment with uh, Buddhism, and it seems to be a positive rather than a negative. That's a good shot, mate. Uh, with Buddhism, a justice system where responsibility is highlighted is important, and there needs to be compassion for all. So, uh, it's a couple of 12 mark. Uh, <laughs> you right there, mate? Yeah? All right, cool. All right, so let's explain prisons. Uh, okay, so prisonment is prisonment. Prisons are jog on. <laughs> Prisons is where punishment is a loss of liberty. For the Christian side, it is, they support prisons for serious crimes, uh, but prisoners should be well treated, and the aim is to reform them. For the Buddhist point of view, the main aim should be to protect society, and prisoners should be well treated, and the aim again is to reform them. All right, let's have a look at corporal punishment. You should understand that corporal punishment is punishment through pain, um, which is illegal in the United Kingdom, and uh, Christians and Buddhists are completely against it. Uh, there's no sense of reformation, there's no sense of respect, and it is a violent act which Buddhists are dead set against. So an explanation of community service. Both Buddhists and Christians are for community service on the whole, uh, saying that rehabilitation and compensation and deterrent is good for Christians, and this is the idea that they can be rehabilitated into the community for Buddhists. Community services work in the community and it may include treatment. Is it raining? Bollocks. No. All right. It's not raining. The death penalty is illegal in the UK. There is little evidence that it works as a deterrent. The statistics tell us that. And some would argue, though, that it does protect society. So you have backwards and forwards conversations and arguments. For Christianities, most would say do not kill. Some would say eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth but all would talk about the sanctity of life. Most, Christ, uh, most Buddhists sorry, would say abstain from taking life, but in Thailand, capital punishment is legal, uh, so the Buddhist values there have not influenced the government, and one of the main teachings that's influential here is the teaching of karma. Uh, it is very important to understand that in uh, this paper, uh, which I'll mention in the exam guide paper, don't write something like all Christians or all Buddhists. Don't even write Christians and Buddhists believe. Uh, use words like most and some, all right? <clears throat> so, an explanation finally of forgiveness and then suffering. Essentially, Jesus on the cross forgave the people who crucified him. That is the example set to Christians. And the Lord's Prayer that he taught uses the words, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Uh, forgiveness is a goal of Christianity modelled by Christ but it is not a replacement for punishment people don't just get away with it uh, forgiveness is a big deal in Buddhism as well um, essentially one of the quotes in the Dhammapada is of those who wrap themselves up in it hatred is not quenched the idea is to let go of anger and resentment and aim to reform finally we'll look at suffering uh, Christians believe that we have a duty to help those who are suffering we have the parable of the Good Samaritan and this is the idea that uh, suffering you know can be caused by free will and it can strengthen our character and our faith we have a duty to help those who are in need in buddhism suffering is at the core of buddhist teaching it is a part of life and we have the concept of karuna and metta again and the main goal of buddhism is to overcome suffering overcome it for yourself and overcome it for other people right um good luck in your exam you all right <laughs>